New reporting from Axios about former President Trump's final weeks in office, including an 11th hour push to withdraw U.S. troops from Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Germany, and the entire continent of Africa. Jonathan Swan is with us now. He's a national political reporter for Axios who broke this story. Jonathan, this is amazing. You begin this remarkable reporting by telling the story of John McEntee, 31 years old, not connected to the military at all, presenting this typewritten order on a piece of paper that basically says, withdraw U.S. troops from, gosh, half the world. What went on here? Yeah, so this this reporting, which we first um, broke last night on Axios on HBO, is is really documenting what was one of the tensest periods between a president and the United States military in modern history. And just to give your viewers context, this is November the 9th. This is six days after Donald Trump lost the election to Joe Biden. So he is a, a caretaker, lame duck president. And on November the 9th, a retired army colonel, highly con controversial uh, retired army colonel, Douglas McGregor, gets a phone call from John McEntee, who's one of President Trump's most favoured aides. You said it right, 31-year-old, former body man to the president, um, who the president had installed at, to run the powerful presidential personnel office. He calls McGregor into his office in the EOB, sits him down, and he's just come from the Oval Office, and he hands him his, his handwritten notes from that meeting, and he says, this is what the president wants you to do. And it's what you just outlined. And, you know, we've, we've talked about Afghanistan. We've talked about, you know, to some extent, Iraq and Syria. But he asked him also to complete an entire U.S. troop withdrawal from Germany before January 20. And that would have completely reshaped America's role in the world, its alliances, uh, its relationship to NATO. And it's not some... Uh, fantastical notion. The president had already ordered a, a, a significant troop drawdown from Germany. So it was something he was already uh, on the path of doing. So anyway, th this is what was presented to McGregor, which set in chain a process of pushback, uh, which went right to the top of, of the U.S. military. And I, I, Jonathan, this must have been something to report. I mean, this is the kind of storyline that the three of us would look at if it was a screenplay and say, this is a poorly researched screenplay. This is not how things work at all. People would not, you know, do these kinds of things and ignore those kinds of people. I mean, at this point, you describe how the National Security Advisor, after this order goes to the Pentagon, the White House counsel, and even the staff secretary, you know, who would be in charge of all of these kinds of paper products, usually, they had no idea that this was happening. Right. So, so this piece of paper, even Douglas McGregor, who has, you know, gone on Fox many times and called for total U.S. withdrawal from Germany, oh, sorry, not from Germany, from, from Afghanistan, Iraq, or even he says to McEntee, yeah, I, I don't know that we could do all of this before January 20. So he, he basically uh, calls, talks to one of McEntee's subordinates in the presidential personnel office, who doesn't, who's never written an order to withdraw from war before. Remember, this is a functionary inside the presidential personnel office. Typed, says, I don't know how to do this. And, and McGregor says, go to a file drawer, pull out a presidential memorandum. It'll have the, the orders and the right things. Anyway, types up this order. And so on November the 11th in the afternoon, Christopher Miller, who is the new, on his third day in the job as the acting secretary of defense, he receives by courier this printed formal order signed by the President of the United States calling for a total withdrawal from Afghanistan by January 15, total withdrawal from Somalia by December 31. And he says, you know, what in God's name is this? And as you said correctly, they, they basically start doing detective work and they figure out that none of the usual people who would have seen or worked on such an order were aware of it. Mm -hmm. And it was then that dawned on them that this was an off-the-books operation by the commander-in-chief himself. It, it really is stunning to think about the implications, how many troops, what it would have meant for U.S. foreign policy around the world in such a short period of time. So even beyond that report, which aired last night, you're breaking more news. Like every 10 minutes, Jonathan, there's more that's coming out of you here. Uh, we just saw Axios cross something. that you, you, you talked to the former president, and you talked about the former Defense Secretary Mark Esper and their relationship. And in the discussion you had, basically the former president 
talked about the tension, and he thought Esper was overly woke at times. What do you mean by that? So the president, um, basically what I did was I approached him for comment for this story, and, and he agreed to talk on the telephone. And, and one thing he said was that when, he, when it came to Mark Esper, the former defense secretary, one of the reasons he fired him was because he was, quote, unquote, he wrote a, quote, unquote, very woke letter to the military. Uh, it took me a while to realize what this was. Turns out it, it was, a, le it was a, a memo that Esper put out basically talking about improving diversity and commitment to diversity in, in the military. So uh, that gives you a, an indication of uh, how President Trump thought about um, the Pentagon. He had this, the thing about Trump, which was kind of bizarre is for someone who came into office with a completely unnuanced view of US military power, who thought that all of these foreign engagements basically were worthless, wanted to pull them out. He surrounds himself by with generals who were committed to these uh, engagements, who had histories in US Central Command. And he thought that these, mistakenly thought that these figures like James Mattis, the, the former defense secretary, General Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, who's still the chairman of Joint Chiefs, Trump sort of thought they were these unreconstructed 1940s generals who would agree with him that torture is great and, uh, you know, we should send troops onto the streets to quell uh, protests and riots. And actually, these people couldn't have more fundamentally disagreed with his worldview. And, and that's where you got this really intense pushback from the top levels of the military to the president of the United States. Jonathan Swan, uh, well done. Really interesting, important reporting. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thanks so much for having me.